Hello and good afternoon kids. Welcome back once again to this short tutorial video for class 7 math under the topic algebraic expressions. So before moving on to the topic I would like to remind you that those who haven't went through the basic of this chapter please go through the basics as it is given in the uh, the school channel uh, in the for the with the name of uh, fundamental concepts and operations and it must have been written under class 8 math so the content is same so therefore I want you to go for the basics first okay if you haven't go, gone through the basic you won't understand the topic so okay and those who have done the topic gone through the basic so let's begin with the exercise and please dear kids I recommend you to go through the basics first in order to understand the chapter okay so uh, in this chapter that is class 8 math algebraic expressions exercise 11 that is chapter number 11 so uh, the uh, previous questions from exercise 11a were all from the basics part so that is why I am just uh, starting from the question number 8 so as soon as you go through the basics you will get, get to understand all the previous questions okay so that is why the basics are very important not only for the previous questions but for the upcoming sums as well okay in this one that is exercise 11a question number 8 what we are given here is we are given with the values of the variables c a is given as 2 the value of a is given as 2 b is given as 1 and c is given as 10 and we need uh, the sum is given in terms of variables so we need to find the exact value that is the constant value for the when the terms are expressed in terms of variables okay so the first one in here is given as c cube so the value of c was given as 10 so all we need to do is substitute the value of c in the variable so if i have done 10 cube so 10 cube means 10 into 10 into 10 so 10 into 10 into 10 will give us 1000 okay it's quite simple isn't it so but remember dear kids uh, for the terms like variables which one is variable which one is constant co the coefficients and all the relations and all you need to do is first go through the basics okay okay now the second one in here is given as 2b whole squared so the value of b again is given as 1 c1 2 and b the constant and the variable the relation is multiplication so I have substituted the value of b in here as 1 so 2 into 1 whole squared 2 into 1 as we know is 2 because whatever is the inside the bracket we need to solve it first according to the board mass rule isn't it so it is 2 squared that is 2 squared means 2 into 2 so 2 into 2 is 4 okay the third one in here again is c plus b whole squared again the value of c is given as 10 the value of b is given as 1 the relation between them is plus so within the bracket 10 plus 1 that is 11 11 squared means 11 into 11 that is 121 is it okay <clears throat> okay now the fourth one in here we have is a minus 3 whole squared so the value of a was given as 2 see as you can see here it's given as 2 so it is 2 minus 3 whole squared and 2 minus 3 we know which one is greater minus 3 is greater uh, 3 is greater isn't it 3 is greater with a negative sign so opposite signs are subtracted and the sign of greater number follows so the greater number is 3 the sign is minus so it is 2 minus 3 is minus 1 so minus 1 squared means minus 1 into minus 1 so minus into minus plus so we don't need to mention the plus sign isn't it so 1 into 1 will give us 1 okay and so similarly and the fifth one we have here is 1 by 2 c whole cube so the constant variable the relation is multiplication so 1 by 2 into the value of c as we know it's 10 given as 10 so the denominator and numerator we can cancel the terms if they are cancelable isn't it there are multiples or factors so 2 5 times is 10 what we have now here is 5 into 1 is 5 the denominator remains as 1 so no need to write the denominator isn't it it can be neglected 1 so 5 cube so ultimately 5 cube so 5 cube means we know 5 into 5 into 5 that is 125 is it okay and the eighth one the question number 8 we have here is 3b within the bracket a cube minus c so 3 and b the relation again constant under variable the relation is multiplication we know 
what we need to do here is substitute all the values of the variables, isn't it? So 3 into the value of b is given as 1, so 1 within the bracket, a cube, so the value of a is 2, 2 cube, minus c, the value is given as 10, so 10 in here. So after substituting, what we need to do is proceed with this, isn't it? 3 into 1, it's 3 outside the bracket, within the bracket, 2 cube, 2 cube means 2 into 2 into 2, so minus 10, so 3 again within the bracket. 2 into 2 into 2 multiplication comes first, isn't it? So 22 is 2 will give us 8. 8 minus 10, again 8 minus 10. 10 a greater number with a negative sign, opposite signs are subtracted. So we have here as minus 2. And as you know, the term, uh, the bracket, bracket means multiplication. So all we need to do is multiply the terms, isn't it? So before going with the multiplication, what are, what are we supposed to do? First we need to multiply the signs, isn't it? So, the sine of 3 is plus, so plus into minus, it's minus 3 into 2, it's 6. Okay, so I hope you guys have understood this one. Okay, and now moving on to the next topic. Next one, so what we'll do is, we'll go with the addition and subtraction of polynomials. Now this one is very important, see, because the same basics will be followed till class 10 and even uh, to higher levels as well so these are the basics so for this sum basic sum you need to understand the basics also so therefore I highly recommend you to go with the basics as well okay so addition and subtraction of polynomials it can be done in two ways number one first one is known as row method second one is known as column method so we'll be doing the both one okay so whichever you method you find it easier you can go with that okay so it's in exercise 11 B so exercise 11 B question number one 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 what we have is we need to add up the terms the terms are given as 8xy comma 2xy 9xy it's monomials isn't it single term see 8xy 2xy 9xy monomial so for row method it's simple see 8xy all we need to do is add the terms isn't it so plus 2xy so plus 9xy now simple and what happens in addition is all you need to do is just deal with the constant terms the coefficients remember so 8 plus 2 it's 10 10 plus 9 it's 19 so it is 19 in here 19 the variable will remain as same as it is see x y 19 x y no need to change any variable the variable won't change it will remain as it is is it okay it's for addition remember and the column method it's easy one column method also see all you need to do is place the <coughs> terms vertically isn't it so 8xy 2xy 9xy vertical placement like terms they are remember like terms only the like terms can be added or subtracted not on like terms remember so since all the three terms they are like terms so 8 plus 2 again it's 10 10 plus 9 is 19 so it is 19xy <coughs> okay okay mm -hmm. <coughs> For the next one, yes, for the question number two, what we have in here is um, we are given with four terms that to four monomials. See, 6a, 5a, minus 3a, and minus 3. So, again, simple thing with the row method 6a plus 5a plus, and within the bracket 3a because we cannot write two signs together since it has a negative sign. So, I place the bracket. Is it okay? Plus again 3 with a negative sign, so plus within the bracket 3a. Now see, these two terms, they have the same signs, as we know, same signs are added, and the sign remains same, as well as they are like terms. So see, the variables, they are like terms, isn't it? So 6 plus 5, it is 11a. Now, plus into minus, we know that bracket means multiplication. So whenever we need to open up the bracket, we need to multiply the terms, isn't it? And when there is sign in the bracket, we need to multiply the signs, isn't it? So plus into minus, it's minus. Again, plus into minus, it's minus 3. So, what we have done so far, we have opened up all the brackets. Now, after opening all the bracket, what do I see is the second and the third term. They are like terms as well as with same signs. So, we know same signs are added and the sign remains same, isn't it? So, minus 3 and minus 3 will give us minus 6a. Now, again, still we have like term with opposite signs. So, we know that opposite signs are subtracted and the sign of greater number follows, isn't it? So, for 11 the sign is plus that means the greater number has a plus sign so opposite signs so 11 minus 6 is 5 so 5a sign of greater number follows therefore it is plus 5a is it okay okay now again if you go with the column method as well is it 
same again the placement has to be vertical at first we have I placed vertically so see 6a 5a minus 3a minus 3 we are adding up the terms isn't it so therefore for these two terms again the same thing same signs will be added so these two terms will give me 11a these two terms will give me minus 6a again two terms like terms with opposite signs so we know opposite signs subtract a sign of greater number follows so 11 minus 6 it's 5 5a with a plus sign okay <coughs> okay now in this one yeah question number three what we have here is 5x squared comma 2x now see though the variables are same but the powers are different isn't it variable it's xx the powers are different isn't it it's 2 and this one it has a power 1 so these two terms they are unlike terms now see as I've already said unlike terms they cannot be added or they cannot be subtracted so if you are given with the addition of unlike terms all you can do here is simply place the sign in between them see the row method 5x squared plus 2x and we are done here since they are unlike terms we cannot go further okay okay now say, say similarly the column method as well so 5x squared plus 2x so unlike terms 5x squared plus 2x so done okay okay now the next one we have here is in terms of decimals so as I say said uh, whenever you go for addition or subtraction of terms you need to check whether they are like terms or not isn't it and how do we know whether they are like terms or not by looking at the variables not just the variables but the power of the variables as well so see what do we see what do I see here is x square y x square y x square y so all the variables it's same that means all the three terms in here they're like terms isn't it so what we can do yeah we can now add or subtract the terms the second term in here has a negative sign remember so <clears throat> while placing in the row method so what I did was 3.3 x square y plus it has got a negative sign so therefore I have to use a bracket so bracket minus 2.4 x square y plus 6.4 x square y so now what do I see here is these two terms they have the same signs the first term and the third term isn't it so we know the same signs are added and the sign remains same so therefore after adding up these two we know that and what happens in addition the constant terms will be added remember the variable remains same so 3.3 and 6.4 when you add them up you'll get 9.7 opening up the bracket with the second term plus into minus it's minus 2.4 x square y again like terms with opposite signs opposite signs are subtracted and the sign remains same again so 9.7 minus 2.4 will give you 7.3 the variable remains the same again so x square y is it okay okay <clears throat> and I have done with the fractional form as well see for the fractional form we are given with four monomials see this one first second third term all single single terms that is monomials so in order to approach first we need to look at the variables as I said whether they are like terms or not so a b cube a b cube a b cube and a b cube so what do we get to know all these terms all the four terms they are like terms that means they can be added or subtracted after that what I have done here is I have used the symbol of addition because the sum was under the addition topic so first term plus second term plus third term and th the fourth term so what do we know here again first third and first second and first third and fourth we have here first third and uh, fourth with the same signs so same signs are added and the sign remains same so again all we need to do is go with the constant terms isn't it so 4 by 5 plus 1 by 2 plus 3 by 4 now what we know here is how do we add fractions by taking the LCM and all isn't it so that's what I have done here see I've taken all the uh, the three terms the same signs so add them up taking the LCM and all and I got 41 divided by 20 so that is why I have written here 41 divided by 20 a b cube the variable remains the same remember that in case of addition and subtraction it only changes in case of multiplication and division okay you'll get to know it afterwards okay the second term with the negative sign plus into minus it's minus 2 by 3 a b cube so now we have here again two like terms with opposite signs so it will be subtracted so again what I have done here on the rough part the subtraction of the fractional forms again taken the LCM and all 
got my answer as 83 divided by 60 so 83 divided by 60 db cube it is okay okay <coughs> and yes for few sums for subtraction as well mm, for question number two three we have here as three by five x square y from seven by five x square y so in case of subtraction as soon as the term from comes we know that the second term comes first the first term goes second isn't it so the same thing happened here see i place the second term in first 7 by 5 x square y minus 3 by 5 x square y so it's now simple subtraction isn't it the variables are same that is they are like terms so all we need to do is go with the constant terms we got fractional forms that to like fractions so simple 7 minus 3 it is 4 4 divided by 5 the variable remains the same x square y okay and again the question number 6 we have here is minus 18 m square n square from minus 15 m square n square so the second term comes first first we are dealing with the subtraction so minus and the first term already has a negative sign so i need to keep it within the bracket so that's what i have done here after opening up the bracket what do i got two like terms with opposite signs see and as we know opposite signs are subtracted the sign of greater number follows 18 has a greater number with a plus sign so it is plus 3 m square n square okay and again for question number 3 in question number 3 we got sums mm, the question is already given in the column form so you can simply directly do the sum okay in the column form also what we have is say the last column in the last column what we have is minus 8 plus 11 and plus 2 so these two with the same signs so it will be added first so it will be 13 plus 13 minus 8 it is plus 5 okay these two like terms see we are what we are doing here is we are sorting out the like terms as well so plus 6a minus 3a so it will give you plus 3a opposite signs are subtracted and a greater number follows greater with a plus sign so plus 3a and these two 6a square 4a square minus a square now these two terms have the same signs so this will give you 10a square minus a square the coefficient is 1 we know isn't it so 10 minus 1 is 9 so 9a square so 9a square okay so I hope you could have understood this lesson <coughs> about the simple addition and subtraction of fractions for those who haven't please go through the basics first then you will get to know then the it will be easier for you to understand the sums regarding the topic and the remaining will be your homework so until then stay safe